Okay, let's fix this thing. Let's get a proper working telegraph pole system. Part C. So I'm making a, a model for a spline mesh to replace the cable component so that we can get a proper static baked out sort of wire setup that's not going to waste any time on physics. So this is a bit of a funny one, a bit stumpy. Um, this is in light wave, so it's probably unlike anything else. Um, but I'm going to put a material on it, which is smooth, and I'm going to have to adjust that so that it's uh, where's it gone? So that the smoothing angle will make it totally smooth. Oh, wrong one. So if I adjust that, you'll see it pop as soon as it goes beyond 90 degrees. So that's smoothing all the way around, and I'm going to just uh, unlink the ends from it so that it doesn't do some weird shading. And so that, from a distance at least, will look fairly smooth and deceptively more rounded than just full sides. Um, it's quite stumpy, but if we make it a spline mesh, it will be stretched out as much as we need. Um, all that remains is to do light mapping and such so and also texturing which is difficult by eye as it's not got any pattern on it but um, let's just quickly do that where are my UVs? so um, interesting I don't know what's going on there but it's on the z-axis so let's uh, start with texture and that is lengthways, so it's a bit squished, but that's fine. Actually, for the texture, we want it to be uh, stretched out a bit, like that. Um, but we may need to somehow change the proportions of it when it's stretched out. But we basically want a material that's not going to be visible, just to be tiled anyway, because that might be a challenge. So let's just leave it at that. Uh, and the light map is similar, except we've got the ends, so we're going to have to possibly just, I don't know, uh, maybe pull it in a bit. And then do the ends separately, by any means. So it's a bit of a dog. Um, I've done it with 10 segments. We might want more, possibly. Um, I can probably just subdivide them out if we need more. Um, collisions, well, I'm going to make, just make another disc, strangely, um, with only one segment. So, there we go, there is a very simple shape there for our collision. I just need to name the layers so the collision is accepted and uh, uh, that's our wire. So I'll see you in the editor. Ding ding, correction. The collision hull is not a single piece because our wire is going to be deformed. So we need a collision hull which exactly matches the points which are going to be deformed on the spline. So I'm going to delete that and replace it with our more complicated shapes. This will reduce the performance of the collision, but it should hopefully um, work fine. Uh, moving on, let's texture it. So visually, that's all right. That's our basic wire, and here's our blueprint. I can get rid of a fudge. I don't fully understand. Fudge that, and don't need that. So I'm going to ooh, try and figure out how to redo this with 
a spline mesh. Uh, so I'm going to first of all add a variable for wire mesh, compile, and the default wire mesh will be this thing. So that's that. I'm going to need that in somewhere around here. So there's the socket location. Uh, right. I don't want that, but I'm not going to delete it just yet. Um, if true, add spline mesh component. So this is the one I want. It's not going to go in there, is it? Uh, easier just to make a whole new one probably. List of spline meshes. And that's going to be an array. <coughs> uh, oh, spline mesh components. Boink. What happened there? Do do do. Do do do. Right. And well, let's leave that there for now. Manual attachment, I should think. So this looks very similar, familiar. Um, and that ain't going to work either, is it? So I'm going to have to redo that. One thing that's a bit of a pain is getting rid of reroute nodes. And such like. In fact, we don't want that at all. But I'll leave that for now. OK. So one end will be there. Um, I think I want to leave that as zero rotation, but that might need to be tweaked. Uh, yeah. And, you know, I was going to do this a slightly different way. OK, we need to make a spline and then fit the mesh to it. So, <coughs> add a spline component, and we're going to need a list of splines. Okay, let's get our. Oh, God knows what it's doing now. Get our housekeeping in order. Sorry about the mess. Okay. Again, hmm. I'll think about this and get back to you. Right, I'm back. So, having thought about this, no, I don't need splines. I just need spline meshes. A spline mesh has a start and an end and a tangent at, at either end and rotation. Um, and if I want to create a wire with a dip in the middle. I basically need three different points, so I'm going to need two spline meshes. A wire spline mesh going down to the dip, and a wire spline mesh going back up. So I know those points at either end, and I need to calculate a middle point, which is essentially the half the vector between, going if A is the start, B is the finish, it's half the AB vector, and then with a bit taken off on the Z-axis to bring it down to a dip. 
and I need to also figure out the tangents and that kind of thing. I think if I just have sort of flat tangents it might work, but that's my basic principle and that makes it a little bit less straightforward to figure out. So I'm going to do that and come back to you. Right, so again I'm nearly there. I'll show you what I've got so far. So I've redone this to use spline meshes and as I've said it uses two spline meshes one on either side of the midpoint. So I've slightly refactored this so uh, it works out the locations of the start and the end, the start being the present static mesh, the end being the next pole in the chain. It calculates the difference between them as a vector and the midpoint is basically that vector minus a bit for the dip and then added to the original base vector and that's just a bit of test code. So the first half of the wire is created, adds a spline mesh component, uh, adds it to our array of them, sets the static mesh to be the wire mesh, sets the start and end scale to be the width, and sets the start and end of the spline mesh. Um, the tangent is something which needs to be refined as we'll see, but it may be easier just to change the way I do this uh, rather than mess with all the maths. Uh, we'll come to that and it sets the material. And then it does the same for the second half of the spline mesh starting from the midpoint and going to the end point. So what does it look like? Ta-da! Now that is not quite right. Um, so it's a this is a hacky anyway. It's a hacky approach to doing this, um, but the shape of the wire is all wrong. It's not hanging naturally with gravity. It would be nice to use the cable component and freeze it, but there is no option to do that at the present. So um, you can change things. So I've set the tangent to be a multiple of the length uh, in that direction. Um, where are we? So here I've scaled it to be 0.5. If I go lower, say 0.2, then the shape changes, but again, not quite right. Um, so now I think about it, if I have a small tangent at the top and a big one at the bottom, that might fix it. So let's see if I can do that. So this will be pole end and this will be at the midpoint. So I want a nice big one at the midpoint. Alright, let's try and figure this out. So the start tangent, sorry about the mess. Okay. And the start tangent. So let's see if that makes any difference. Well, looks a little bit more natural, I think. Might not be quite right. Uh, but if I tweak those numbers a bit more, that might just do it, which would be nice. The alternative uh, I was thinking of is just to draw a wire, rather than a straight wire as the base wire, have a wire with the appropriate dip in it um, and then just string it together without making a dip in the midpoint um, and just scaling the vertical axis as necessary. Um, but that might not be necessary. Uh, but it would be simpler because it would remove the need for two spline meshes for every gap. You could just have the one spline mesh. Um, I think I kind of want no tangent there. I don't know how that's going to work. Now also, I could change the rotation. Oh, why was I doing that? I could change the rotation here. Um, but you know, that sort of works, I think. Uh, yeah. Well, it's alright, that is. Okay, so I 
may refine the meshes, obviously, that's pretty ugly. I may refine the attachments, um, but that's a workable system. Let's try, just for fun, just trying to do this from scratch, just to make sure it works. So, telegraph, what a pole there. Interesting that it has that mesh on it. Um, let's put that over there. Let's no, wrong one. Next pole is probably six. Uh, so that basically works. But we'll have to manually flip this. That was easy. And then... Why not? A slightly extreme case. Doo -doo -doo. Now here's a problem. It doesn't update the previous one and I can't find any obvious way to force that, but once you do that um, it updates, so that's a problem to be overcome when you thought you had it all fixed uh, but you can see that it's fairly easy to use and uh, seems to work alright just the problem of the updating Do do up and down. There we go. So I think if you construct it backwards somehow, it'll re update in the right order. Uh, but that's fairly handy. Uh, actually, yes, the other thing that's missing now. Think about it is to attach random cables to other places. Um, but uh, you know, you can hack it in the meantime. Ooh. Uh, so this needs a bit of work. Okay. And you could even turn that off. So it's a start. And that's basically it. So hopefully I'll show you at some point an improved version. But that's the basic structure. So that was helpful to you. Bye bye. And a little postscript. I did make things a bit better. So I've got a new cable connector actor blueprint, uh, which you drag on, and the data set up a little differently. Tiny little thing, but you can change the mesh. Uh, if you go to this thing, there's an array which you can edit of connected wires, and I don't know why it's going over there. That's interesting. That shouldn't probably be displaying. Uh, let's turn it off for now. Uh, so you select the pole it's going to, and then you can select the socket, the tension I need to set a default for. Uh, and you can change the width of the wire as usual and you specify the connector you want it to go to, A to E, and uh, let's just reduce that tension a bit. And um, if you move it around, everything updates nicely. If you move the mesh it's attached to, it 
doesn't update properly, which we've seen before. Um, but now there's a little button you can click just to make it update. So not perfect, but easily fixable. And you can have each connector have an arbitrary number of wires. Just add another one. Go into whichever pole you want. And uh, that'll update as you want. And these are all static meshes, no physics involved. So that should help with setting things up quickly. And that's just a little tweak of the systems we put in place for the main telegraph pole system. Um, so each item in the array is using the structure which I've created and I'm going to set a default for the tension to about 5 so it's quite nice to have slightly droopy wires on this one um, default material, mesh and socket and all these things so that's a separate structure whenever I change that I need to recompile the blueprint and I've refactored things a bit to put uh, the meat of things into separate functions um, and the main loop is different it's a for each member of this list of connected wires and then these are all the features which it uses if there's a wire present it does the same stuff as before makes two spline meshes and then it sets the cable properties and I've taken this out into a separate function and it gets the relevant item from the list of connected wires and then it breaks out all these properties and then it works as before setting all these features of the spline meshes so there we go and in case you weren't aware to make the update cables button you go to the relevant function and just tick call an editor and that then gives you that button automatically. Bye!